On October 25, 1950, the silent fears of the United Nations were confirmed. The Chinese that had been quietly amassing between the UN forces and the Yalu River suddenly made their presence known. In the Central Mountains, thousands of American troops were ambushed and surrounded by a massive Chinese division. Entire battalions were caught off guard and decimated. Airdrops were all the support the UN soldiers had. They fought desperately in all directions trying to make it out alive. Most of them didn't. As word of the massacre spread among the troops, their morale, which had been sky high just hours before, dropped quickly. They said it sounded like Chinese. No one knew what the hell was going on. It was Halloween and colder than a witch. We waited and froze. It was very dark. Robert Harper, 19th Infantry. The Far East Command, already gearing up for a victory parade, still couldn't believe it was facing a full Chinese assault. Reports back to Washington claimed the attacks came from a small force assisting with the defense of the Yalu River, and nothing more. But General Walker was alarmed. He ordered all of his units, even those far from the attack, to pull back to the Changchun River and reevaluate the situation. Then, just as abruptly as the ambushes came, they ended. The Chinese faded back into the hills and waited. Throughout November, American surveillance planes tried to determine just how many Chinese were out there. Estimates counted between 50 and 70,000, a manageable number. But it turned out they missed another 250,000. The Chinese were incredibly adept at concealing themselves. They would keep still all day, camouflaged under helmets covered with brush. To planes flying overhead, heavily occupied areas often looked like empty landscape. Most of November passed quietly, and UN troops held out hope that they'd make it home for Christmas. Assured by the silence, General MacArthur ordered a cautious advance on November 24th. In the west, the 8th Army would head for the Yalu as a unified front, hoping to prevent any single battalion from being caught out on a limb. In the east, the 10th Corps was ordered to make a major advance around the Chosun Reservoir. The first day of the offensive was encouraging. Modest gains were made all along the line. But then, on November 25th, the war suddenly turned upside down. The Chinese found a vulnerable gap between the 8th Army and the 10th Corps in the Central Mountains. They struck there with all their might. The entire UN line was split in two. Three days into a renewed offensive, the UN force found itself in a full-scale retreat. The UN's lines, as well as its spirits, were broken. And with the attack came the North Korean winter, an enemy that would prove every bit as merciless as the communists.